Then finally about this ayah in regards to this dunya and the next. In this dunya, there is no loss for the believer. They can't lose. You know, believers were addressing the hypocrites and they said to them, I believe this is in Surah At-Tawbah, هَلْ تَرَبَّصُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْحُسْنَيَينَ Are you waiting or procrastinating in our case? And we're only gonna end up in one of two beautiful things. Husnayain, two beautiful things. One, we lose in battle, we die and we go to paradise, we still win. <laughs> or we win in this life and Allah gives us reward in the next life. In other words, the Muslim can't lose. It's only a win-win situation for the believer. So much so as something that everybody gets sad about. You know, when people get sick, you become very sad for them. And it is, it's a very difficult thing for families to cope with and things like that. But from an iman point of view, from a faith point of view, when the messenger is brought sallallahu alayhi wasallam, someone who's sick, what does he say to them? La ba's, the first things he says, la ba's, no problem. That's the first thing he tells them. Okay, it's a strange thing to say to someone who's sick. S sick, he says la ba's, then he says tahoor insha'Allah. It is a purifier by Allah's will. In other words, the longer you are sick, all of your previous sins are being paid for. And when you end up in front of Allah on judgment day, and you, instead of complaining, Ya Allah, why did you keep me sick for so long? I was, you know, I had diabetes, I had cancer, I had, you know, I had really bad allergies, this and that. On the day of judgment, you will thank Allah for that sickness. Because each, each second of that sickness was getting rid of you, rid, rid from you, these sins. And you come before Allah purified, subhanAllah. So the person is going through affliction in this world, but even this is not sadness for them. Allah Azza wa Jalla even makes that a, a place of joy. You know, this, this is the power of this deen. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحسنون And nobody, nobody outside of this deen can enjoy this kind of tranquility and peace. How are you going to find, what kind of people are these, that their homes have been washed away in Pakistan in these floods? And the, the fatawa are being passed in Peshawar and different you know, madaris in Pakistan, that they don't have to fast. And yet, and their homes are gone. They don't even have food to eat for iftar and they're still fasting. They're still fasting. What kind of people are these? You know, this can only happen when Allah gifts somebody with iman. May Allah, you know, make their affliction easy and make it a, an easy road to paradise for all of these people that, are, that Allah Azza wa is testing with this great trial. And on this note, I should mention, following Allah's guidance, one important thing. There are two very difficult trials in this dunya. Very difficult trials. They're very hard to pass. You know what those two trials are? One of those trials is extreme difficulty. Like a calamity, like a flood and an earthquake or you know, serious famine and poverty and hunger and you know, a violence and things like that. These are serious trials, very difficult. You can lose your faith in that kind of a trial. That's one kind of problem that, that, that can test your faith. Here's the second, extreme luxury. When everything is easy, you open the fridge and you have all kinds of drinks, all kinds of food in front of you. Right? All kinds of luxuries are before you. You know what happens when you have too much luxury? You start taking it for granted. And when you take it for granted, then you stop being grateful. So when one thing is missing from the menu, you start becoming angry. Or one thing is less than what you, suppose, you were expecting, then you get upset. You know, you can go to a three-star hotel and then say, man, I should have been in a three and a half star. In other words, you start thinking, what more can I have? You stop being grateful for what you have. And this is a loss of faith also. So some people in this dunya are right now being tested with difficulty. And others don't think we're not being tested. We may be tested with luxury. We may, may, we may be tested with ease. I mean Muslims in this country, we live some of the most luxurious, comfortable lives anywhere in the world. Some of the most, you know, lives of kings. I know there, there are parts in the Muslim world where like children have meat on the table on Eid day. <laughs> and they get one piece of meat. And this is like, on Eid I had, you know what I had? I had a leg of chicken. And they, they're amazed by it. And how much food we throw leftovers and things like that. We're not grateful people. So we're, there's a compare, what, what I'm trying to tell you is, don't just think they're being tested with calamity, we're being tested as well. So now Allah says, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحسنون. Then He gives the, the warning. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا In other words, there are only two alternatives. On the one alternative is people who follow Allah's guidance. He didn't even say believe, he said follow Allah's guidance. What's the opposite of that? وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And as for those who disbelieved and lied against our miraculous signs, أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Those are the people of fire in which they will remain. They will remain in it. May Allah not make us from these people. But I want you to understand the contrast here. The Qur'an is full of comparison and contrast. 
Usually the comparison and contrast is between iman and kufr. Alladhina amanu, alladhina kafaru. Right? This is the contrast. But in these ayat, that's not the contrast. The contrast is between those who follow guidance, not believe, follow guidance, and those who disbelieve. In other words, this time Allah is teaching us a lesson. Don't just think you can claim that you believe and you don't follow guidance. No, not good enough. Then you fall in the latter category. May Allah protect us from it. الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ اللَّهُمَ لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِي أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ Okay. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, speaking of people who do kufr, speaking of people who lie against the ayat of Allah, what are the next words? يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ <laughs> Immediately, you see the connection? Allah Azza wa gave this warning to Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah mentions the nation, because He said, whenever guidance comes to me, com- comes to you from me. And to connect this, I-, I should make mention of one more thing here. When Allah mentioned guidance coming, He said, فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ Whoever follows my guidance, singular. Whoever follows my guidance. Not, وَالَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ هِدَايَ Whoever, the people who follow my guidance. He mentions guide, following guidance as an individual thing. You know why? Because sometimes following guidance means you have to be alone. Following misguidance, everybody can do it. And they'll do it in a herd. And when you want to follow guidance, you have to stand away from the herd. It's like swimming upstream. You'll be the only one sometimes. You might be the only one in your family who's trying to stick to Allah's deen. Everybody else is going in the opposite direction. Look at the messengers. When they start their missions, alayhim wasallatu wasalam, all by themselves. And the people who follow them, the, own, the loners in their families, the, every, the whole family you know, goes against them. So following this deen and following its guidance has to be a very personal, brave initiative. But then the gift of Allah, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون When you do follow Allah's guidance, He gives you a new company. He gives you company of believers. So the rest of the ayah is plural. In this dunya, you get the company of believers. And in the akhirah also, لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ We will enter them into the company of the righteous. May Allah give us that company in dunya and in akhirah. Right? So now, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ O sons of Israel, Israelites, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ Remind yourselves, make mention of my favor, the one I favored you with. أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ Now this word an'ama is very important because the previous surah in the mushaf is the fatiha, all of you know it. Does the word come up in the, that surah too? It does. سِرَاتَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ You know, an'amta alayhim. And th- this is a very powerful ayah. The path of those who you favored. And now Allah says to Bani Israel, I did favor you. We're asking for the path of those who were favored. There were people before who got that favor but didn't appreciate that favor. We're being taught a very, very serious lesson. A lot of times when people read Bani Israel, you know, the accounts of Bani Israel, especially in Surah Al-Baqarah, they read it and go, oh man, those Jews, there was some crazy bunch. You know, how could they do this, that, and the other? And you're, you're thinking of how, what losers they were, and how dare they do this to Musa alayhi salam, and how could they respond to Allah in this way, and things like that. But actually, you were missing something. When the Sahaba heard these ayat, it wasn't so much that this was a case against Bani Israel. They thought of who first? They thought, they thought of themselves. Look at, for example, a conversation that happens between Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, anhu was telling Muawiyah radiallahu anhu about the ayah, الَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ Those who hoard gold and, gold and silver. You know, he was warning him about Muslims being obsessed with saving too much wealth. So he quoted that part of the ayah. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu says, نَزَلَتْ فِي أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ يَا أَبَا ذَرْ This was revealed about the people of the book. This is not about us, this is about the Jews and the Christians. And what does Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu say? He says, نَزَلَتْ فِيهِمْ عِبْرَةً لَنَا It was revealed about them. But it's a warning and a lesson for us. In other words, even when they read about Bani Israel, they're not thinking about Bani Israel, they are thinking about themselves. And this will become abundantly clear in this surah. Abundantly clear. That as we read their accounts, we are being told, look, there's a, there's a veteran nation that had guidance, that was given a book, and it was, uh, the messenger sent to them is the closest to Muhammad wasallam in many regards. Musa alayhi salam. You know, he was commanded with many a things that the Messenger of Allah was commanded with وسلم. And there's a reason, he is the most mentioned Messenger in the Qur'an. Because his case study will help us do our life, and, and live our life as an Ummah better. 
we, we must carefully, carefully analyze all of the mistakes of Bani Israel. Why? So we don't make those mistakes. That's the point of it. So now Allah begins, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ So when you're listening, Allah telling Bani Israel, remember the favor I favored you with. Now you have to think. They should remember the favor they were favored with. But don't we have to remember the favor Allah favored us with? What is the favor Allah favored us with? He made us the last ummah. He made us the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He made us Ahlul Quran, the people of Quran. He made us the people qualified for the shafa'ah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is not a small favor. You make mention of the favor Allah gave you. And you know, by the way, when you remember somebody's gift, you appreciate it more. If you don't remember the gift, you don't appreciate it. This, is, this has to become part of the culture of Muslims. We all know we're Muslims, we all know we're people of Qur'an. But we have to remind each other, can you appreciate that Allah gave us this book? It should be like a new gift every time. We should remember this book as a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. We should remember our messenger as a gift, sallallahu alayhi wa as a gift given to us, a special gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَوْفُ بِعَهْدِي أُوْفِ بِعَهْدِكُمْ Now that you remember this favor, what should be the natural consequence? You fulfill, fulfill the, my promise. Fulfill my promise. And I will fulfill my promise to you. And أُوْفِي is majzum, which means it's jawab al shart. If you fulfill my promise, then as a consequence, I will fulfill my promise to you. My promise to you, what is Allah's promise to them? You know, there are two promises to them. There's a promise in dunya, and there's a promise in the akhirah. The promise in, the, in this dunya is if they established Torah, they would have eaten from above them and from below them. This was the promise given to them. If you can follow this book, I will make your dunya into Jannah. I will give you everything. You know people run after dunya, Allah, t- Allah gave them the formula. If you just follow my guidance, you'll get dunya too. I'll give you that too. You won't even have to run after it. It'll just come to you. And then there was the reward of the akhirah. The same thing has been given to us. The, this promise has been given to us. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You know, and in that ayah, Allah mentions, لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا You know, He says He will establish the believers in the land, and He will make them follow generation after generation, and He will settle them after their situation of fear, He will remove the position of fear from the ummah. Is it not the case that the ummah is in a position of fear today? The vast majority of Muslims live a life of fear. And Allah is giving them the way out of that fear. It's, it's very, it's, it's such an oversimplistic thing. But you know, and if I, you and I give speeches about it, it's something else. If we all just heard Allah's speech, Allah telling us come back. It's a, diff, it's a different thing. This ummah has to be called back to Allah's khutbah, Allah's wa'ma'ivah, Allah's advice which is Qur'an itself. You know, across this world, in this month, the ummah is listening to Allah's promise. Allah's words, every night. If we just reflected on one page of what we were reciting, just one page, this favor of Allah, it would be easy for us to fulfill the promise He has made with us, and then He would fulfill the promise He has made.